Morning everyone. Today I want to talk to you about the hundred thousand pound mistake. This is an expensive one. So it's a Thursday morning and uh, I'm continuing my mistake series and this is a big one. Um, it is a officially autumn. It's we passed equinox and it is cold today. It's been chucking it down the last couple of days. It's cold and wet. It's muddy and uh, yeah, I won't be really feeling it today, but I'm here anyway. So, a hundred thousand pound mistake. Now, this will, there's a few lessons here when I talk to you about this that will be correlated to previous episodes because this is a combination of mistakes that have cost me, well, it cost me fifty thousand pounds and my ex business partner fifty thousand pounds. And uh, yeah, this is, this is a big one. So, basically, it all starts, it's all stems from the fear of missing out. And uh, I go back um, maybe 12 years ago, something like that. I was growing my uh, property business. It was going quite nicely, but interestingly, it was, growing, it was growing slowly. And I was impatient, I was young and impatient. I wanted success quicker. So I was always on the hunt for something else, another string to add to my bow, so to say. However, my previous topic that I did on a, on a vlog was about how you take on multiple opportunities and what's the criteria for taking on multiple businesses as opposed to just growing one. I talked about the importance of, um, you know, integrating it with your existing distribution channel, your marketing list, your marketing channels. If it doesn't, then uh, it's not a good fit to just walk away. This one couldn't have been further away <laughs> from what my uh, property business was. So I was at a uh, progressive property. I think it might have been a, one of the first ever multiple streams of property income events, and soppy as they call it now. And um, interestingly, I've met a few joint venture partners here. But this guy I met on this occasion, he was from Wigan, and uh, he he was talking about this amazing opportunity about permeable paving. Okay, and what he what he's talking about is how it uses recycled rubber crumb, an adhesive, and uh, some stone. And what it does is it creates this, this everlasting kind of permeable paving solution that is suitable for roads, pavements, you know, a lot of infrastructure out there. Now, I have no idea about groundworks. I have no idea about this type of stuff. But this was quite new at the time. You probably see quite a lot of rubber-based. You know, the only way I can describe it is it's, it's like the play park um, base, you know, where kids fall off a swing or something, it's really soft rubber crumb. It's like that, but with stone in it and a resin that makes it really like as, as hard as tarmac almost. It doesn't crumble because it moves, it's dynamic. Rubber shrinks and contracts. So, temperature, you don't get all the pothole related issues you do with tarmac. So, there's loads of pros over traditional paving solutions. But um, this guy's talking to me, got no, no, no uh, background in groundworks. No background in paving. I'm a property investor. I don't know any of the maintenance aspects of property. I know a bit more now than I did when I started. But you know, I was more investment figures, you know, return on investment, that type of stuff. Uh, Analyzing deals, net yields, gross yields, you know, all, all of these kind of kind of analysis stuff. And I just looked at this and thought, wow, this guy's got a background in, in civil engineering. He knows his stuff. And uh, before you knew it. I was on a, a plane over to Florida meeting the, meeting the uh, owner of the company. And the, the opportunity here was to start the Europe side of the business. Okay, so all of this uh, kind of secret recipe for this paving solution. And uh, it, was, um, it was one of those where uh, I, was, I flew over to the, to the US with my business partner. Because I, I then obviously went back and spoke to my business partner who at the time I'm no longer with him. But he got, he got sucked into this just like I did. And this was through me convincing him through kind of Chinese whispers. So we thought, well, what we got to lose? We kind of coincided it with a holiday over to, to Tampa in, uh, in Florida. And uh, to kind of meet and greet this, this guy who created this. He was, he was a northern guy from Barnsley. And uh, he'd found this, uh, he moved over to the US, married an American lady, and uh, built this business empire over in the States. So we got over in it. It was still an SME. It was still a small to medium. Uh, but it was... It's turning over, uh, you know, good revenue. Had lots of, of uh, business coming in. And we met this guy and, 
you know, he was really, really old school, spit and handshake type of guy. I'm not quite sure how we, we were young and naive. And we got kind of sucked into the dream that he sold us. Very, very good, good salesperson. And uh, before you know it, a few weeks later, we'd, uh, we needed to put in 100 grand to have a shareholding in the, in, in the business um, with the, the civil engineering guy. So they were bringing in, we were coming in kind of as, as the kind of business development wing, if you like. So we were going to kind of start building out the customer base and, and signing up uh, accounts and that side of things. And obviously the civil engineering guys were going to be the, the operational guys. That's how it was all mapped out. Uh, morning. And um, so before you know it, there was me, a business partner, putting all of our life savings into this. And it was 50 grand each, complete polar opposite. And ultimately it, it, it shone. And not Sean, it's the, the, the gaps in this opportunity came through. And what I mean by that is that we were, business we were still growing a property business and that was our main focus. We put kind of 50 grand each into a, almost a sideline. No way in a million years we can hit off the ground driving new business when we were only putting half our time into it, if that. And it's a really costly mistake because 50 grand is a lot of money. And, uh, you know, we've known the business is now dissolved that money's lost and uh the american side of the business is still going strong and uh when you look, look back on it really really steeply at learning curve because a lot of money to lose i could have been a couple of property deals back in the day that i'd still have that i'd get my return on this was money into into a paper paper trail really a company that that just dissolved and the money's gone with it so you know the first lesson here is you know if you invest in tangible assets Morning. Uh, what I'm talking about that, well, company is a tangible asset, but it was a new company, so it had no track record, no infrastructure, no tangible assets that had an option to get your money back from. This was paper. It was almost like just paper trail. Whereas you invest in bricks and mortar, tangible assets, there's a resale value. You can insure them and all that type of stuff. We just had no protection over this money. A shareholding in a company that's worth nothing, where we put 50 grand each in. And uh, we thought, oh yeah, that was all secure and everything, but grand scheme of things it wasn't. And it was a very, very costly mistake to kind of learn. It still leaves a bad taste in my mouth now, but it would be easy for me to blame others, but 100% blame myself on this one. And there are other people that kind of invested into it as well that lost money. Um, so there's a lot of people that lost money on this, on this venture. And ultimately, I think it comes down to not having the focus it needed. I think when you looked at the team, there was enough expertise in the team. It just didn't get enough focus. Because even the MD who was brought in had another business. He was focusing on, on that as well. So the, the big lesson here is have tangible assets backing up any investment. So you have an element of security. I very little and I lost a lot of money for it. Number two is any business that has a new one needs the right amount of focus. Really, really, really important. What about and uh, focus is so, so important when you, when you start, especially when you're starting a new business. Running one with a lack of focus is hard enough. But one with, without enough focus to start it, destined for failure. So really, really understand that. So, so important. And, uh, you know, think about whether it fits in. Could it be added as an additional revenue stream to your existing infrastructure? If it can't, it's not the right business to, to add to your portfolio. And that's a, a harsh lesson. Um, you can take these types of look at the risk reward. You can take types of these types of risks a bit more if it's a time investment. But even then, you have to look at the, the opportunity cost. If your time is spent on a on a on a loser against your time spent on something that's really going to make a difference, you, could, you know the compounding impact of missing say six months of your time on your main goal, as opposed, you know, as opposed to chasing shiny pennies elsewhere, you could be three or four years down the line. The compounding effect of that. So you, you, you may have lost three or four years. So don't underestimate the impact of opportunity cost and compounding effects of your decisions. But that was a, a really costly one. And uh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from that. I was young, naive, I was really hungry. The hunger you know, made, me, made me blind in many respects. And uh, it's a costly, costly experience, but certainly I remind myself of that regularly to avoid making those same mistakes again. So I hope you found it useful. Uh, any questions, drop me a comment. Respond to everyone. It's a bigger topic. I'll do a blog episode and tag you in. If it isn't for you, this is irrelevant.
Do some friends on follow me, no drama. Um, but be sure to check out my Facebook group, uh, Entrepreneur, or my YouTube channel, Kevin Britain, Entrepreneur, where I've got over 10 or so episodes are all nice and neatly catalogued by topic. It's a free resource you can just dip in and out of uh, in the future. So uh, please let me sound that. So that's it for me today. Hope it's been good value. As always, stay positive, stay happy, and I will speak to you tomorrow.